finding your own path. More and more people, I suppose you could say, are becoming more spiritually woke, to use the colloquial term that's around at the moment, and realising that there is more to life than things and, you know, going up the job ladder. They're realising <sighs> quality of life is very important and that things may not bring quality of life. But they're also realising that there is a deeper aspect to life, that of the energetic side. And it doesn't mean that people are necessarily, <sighs> I'll use the word healer, in inverted commas, because I personally don't like that note word, because the only healer is the person or the system that you're working with, from my perspective. But I, when I talk about them going into spiritual awareness, it's not about, oh, I, I need to become a guru or a healer, but they're realising there's more to life than just the physical. I had a wonderful conversation this morning with Sue Ellen Lovett over in Australia, an amazing, amazing, glorious lady. And she was talking about how, from a young age, like many other people I know, she had this ability to connect to horses, to feel what they were feeling. But as she you know, grew up and society put, if you like, boundaries in place, that feeling disappeared to a greater or lesser extent. And so many people who've been in that situation or others like me who come from a completely scientific background where, <clears throat> you know, the connection to the animals, I always loved horses, but I could never say that I felt the connection that I could do anything with them um, energetically or feel them. Maybe I wasn't around them enough, who knows? I mean, for me, what we're talking about is innate and it just gets shut down or people don't go there for whatever reason. But I believe it's an innate quality which is a reawakening in many people. So you have, in essence, almost the two polar opposites. Someone who has had the experience of feeling the energy, being able to connect with animals from a very young age and for whom it was natural. And in fact, it became a shock when they realized other people didn't do it. To someone like me who came to it in my 40s, uh, you know, with a massive um, paradigm shift at one horse clinic you know, the horse led me there and that's where it happened. So the discussion is, who should we listen to, for me? Because there are many, many, many texts out there from many, many different people describing how to find your inner self, how to step into the spirituality. And for some people who have had that feeling right from the start it can be really frustrating reading these books although you know well written and well meaning and nobody's forcing anything on anyone from their perspective it makes them it makes everything really complicated uh, why are people talking in this terms of complicating what is basically an innate ability very linked to the power of love when you step into love, and as I spoke of before, love in all its manifestations of awareness, acceptance, gratitude, um, seeing other people, hearing other people at the true level, um, joy, all of the different uh, manifestations. When you step into that, that's when you connect with the being, connect with the world, connect with the animals. And you know, really, it's as simple as that, if you like. So why are there so many self-help books? Why do people in, you know, why do some people feel that the situation is being complicated by all the long words and the deep meanings? And the fact is, we have to accept that everybody comes from a different place. 
for me, I had that awakening at the horse clinic, but my mindset and, you know, it may be just my childhood background and my, you know, schooling was I needed to find the reason. I needed to find answers. I needed to find people who could tell me what was going on and could guide me on a route. I, at that time, did not feel it was innate. I felt it was very much a learnt practice. So all of the other, uh, you know, all of the books and the self-help and the different subjects and they're all there because everybody's coming from a different place. Everybody needs something different. And for me, I, I, you know, I spent 10 years, I think from about 2003 to 2013, I did not stop reading. And this was before I discovered Audible. So I was physically reading all of these books and gleaning something out of each of them and going, oh, right, okay, that's what that means then. That's what that means until in 2015 I suddenly thought okay I don't need to learn anymore and it wasn't a matter of I know everything in fact it was more a matter of I know absolutely fuck all but I realized the journey was mine and that it was for me to decide what was the next step I needed to take rather than reading a book and going, okay, I've done that, I've done that, I've ticked that box, I've ticked that, now I need to tick that. And if, if you like, it was about feeling, um, what's the word, not satisfaction, um, appreciation, no, trust in myself. It was um, trusting that I was enough, that the sensations, the feelings, the thoughts, that were leading me down a certain path that felt right, so I was listening to my intuition on it, those thoughts were then, I was okay with them and I listened to them. Instead of second guessing, going, oh, well, no, what do I know? I was, I'd got to a point where I went, okay, this is what this is all about, listening to yourself. And as I um, said in a previous podcast with Warwick, I think I said it anyway, how after I'd had one of the Reiki attunements, I don't know if it's the same day, the next day, whatever, I walked into a supermarket and the lights, oh God, they made me feel ill. It was all the energy in there. I just, I walked in, felt sick and walked straight out again. And I didn't know what on earth was going on. And I remember I rang two people. I rang my Reiki master and I rang another guy who was a healer. I'm going again, using the word, but he, he'd worked with horses. I'd seen him you know, do amazing stuff. They both gave me two completely different answers. And so in that moment, I thought, well, who do I, uh, who do I follow? Who do I listen to? And that was the moment when I realized I have to find the answers for myself. Now that was actually quite early on in my journey, but it was the moment of clarity that however much information I gather from all of these different sources, that was the moment when I realized it's up to me what I take and what I leave behind. So don't read one book and think, oh, this is it. I've got to follow everything this person says in this order and then go on to the next level. And then if I go to the third level, I might actually find the answer. So it's up to me what I take or what I leave from everything that I read. Just because somebody has said this, and they've got published and they've published 100,000 books doesn't mean to say it's gospel for me so it's not a judgment on oh they're right or they're wrong it's all information I mean it's like with the horses when they do something instead of us now judging it and going oh that's bad that's a naughty horse it's okay that's information that that horse is could be scared could not understand or could be in pain and so when I read a book and it's interesting because I'll open a book up um, and, and start reading and oh, I can usually tell straight away, right, this book is for me. I need to read this book. And the thing is that half of the books, I cannot remember the titles who wrote them and a lot of the information, but the bits that I do need to remember are quite clear because they're what I needed. 
And it's not the whole picture that I needed. It was that bit that I needed. Someone else could read some, that book and pick something major up from a different chapter, whatever. Um, so we're all unique. We all find our own journey. We all come from our own starting point, be it a deep connection as a child or someone who learns it or reawakens it. Because I, as I said, I do believe that connection is innate. And that's what the Aboriginal people still have a greater access to. Their um, connection, their energy of connection hasn't been dampened by society, which says that it can't be true. We can't measure it, it can't be true. Sorry, <laughs> two words and the second one's off. Um, yeah, so these are my thoughts from this morning after I had a most wonderful conversation with Sue Ellen. And oh, I just want people to know everybody has access to this and that put the thought out there if you want to sort of go deeper. And it's again, it's no judgment if you don't. Everybody's on their own path. Everybody fits into a niche within this world. And it's, nobody, it's nobody's place to say to someone else where they should be or what they should be doing, okay? That's totally my mantra because it's all of our different energies that make this world up and make it so interesting and how we learn off each other as well. And yes, in the greater picture, if we could all, as a society of human people, um, move nearer to the goal of self-love and love of others, the world might be a different place. Um, I think there's a groundswell that that is happening, but it's a big, big liner that we've got to turn. You know, if you think of the ocean um, tankers that take God knows how many miles to stop. We've been on this trail of possessions being the great stuff to have, um, of being in control of everything nature included, that we know better than nature, we know better than the earth. We've been on that sort of mindset, mechanistic mindset, Newtonian mindset for many, many centuries now. And so to expect there to be a complete mind shift, I nearly said it's a rude word then, mindset shift with an F, um, is probably asking a bit too much. But from little acorns, mighty oaks do grow. And so the more people that step into the energy of love, the realization they are enough, that that will make the difference to the energy in the world. And that makes it easier for the next person to make the same shift. You don't have to go preaching about it. It's a case of you know, change yourself to change the world. That's where I stand anyway. So folks, hope I haven't bored your ears off you. That's my, what day is it today? Thursday morning musing. I do hope you have a wonderful day. Apologies for the sound. I'm walking along, opening gates, getting out of breath, walking up hills. And also, oh, hello, I have got my doggy with me, so I don't need to call her. Um, have an absolutely stupendous day or evening or night, wherever you are. And I'm just sending you lots of love. Take care.